Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting topics to talk about, but I would like to start with this one, it's a physique update of Horse MD. So he posted this photo, and also a posing video, which I'm gonna show you in a second. As you guys know, he's doing the Arnold Classic, he's 10 weeks out, and right here in this photo, you can see why this guy is even on the list and why he can actually do some serious damage, why he is, in my opinion at least, top 5 material, and I would say he can land anywhere in that top 5. We'll see how much more improvements will he make, but right here you can see some of his really strong points. So he has a couple of really outstanding body parts. For example, his hamstrings in side poses have an insane sweep crazy pop this is not something you see on every physique definitely not also in the side poses his arms are looking really full his chest as well and his waist looks really small so it overall creates an illusion of a really good bodybuilder and bodybuilding after all is an illusion this is what he looks like next to a couple of world-class competitors next to samson dauda who could have won, based on some people, could have won the Mr. Olympia if he was sharper, and he actually was much sharper at this show, Romania, and Horse MD was in a very strong third spot, he could have placed second, but as you can see right here, the way he's hitting the pose right here, he's bending his knees a little bit too much, he's standing low, and he looks much better when he's standing a little bit higher, I mean his hamstrings pop more, his quads maybe won't be as separated, but with that crazy hamstring pop, I think he would do better, also you can see right here like that, that he is very comparable to these other top guys, I would say Bekru Stabani is definitely top 10 material, and as you guys know, Samson is top 3 in the world, I mean, Samson is not really hitting the pose here, and I'm not saying that Horse MD could have beaten Samson, no way, but he could have beaten Bekrus Tabani because he had much better legs. Sure, Bekrus was more conditioned than he had a better back, but I don't think Horse MD was supposed to be any harder than this. I thought he was lean enough, and he had much better legs, so it was, it was close, if you ask me. It was really close between these two guys, so... I noticed some comments from people who are saying that Martin Fitzwater would beat him, that Martin Fitzwater should have been on that list instead of Marcel D'Angelis uh, Horse MD, and I disagree with that. Martin is a great bodybuilder, he would definitely fight for that top 5, just like Horse MD, and maybe, maybe he would beat him, I wouldn't bet on it though, I would rather bet on uh, Horse MD, but there are like 5 guys who are on that list who Martin would probably destroy, we all know why Martin wasn't chosen, it's politics, I'm sure it's politics, but as far as Horse MD, he definitely deserves to be up there, I think this guy has yet to prove himself, his pro debut went insanely well, I mean third at Romania Pro, probably could have placed second if it wasn't his pro debut, so I think that was an amazing achievement, but he has a lot more to achieve in the future. And here is the posing video that he posted, a physique update, in the caption he said the holiday season is over, meaning he probably took some time off, he relaxed with his family, and he's refreshed now, his batteries are full, and he's ready to kill it all over again, to get ready for the Arnold Classic, to be super shredded, to probably make more improvements, because the improvements he made from when he turned pro to his pro debut were insane. So this guy can pack on some tissue seriously fast. So I'm expecting a much improved version for the Arnold Classic and Milo Archer being his coach. I can be pretty sure that he's gonna peak well. And yeah, once again, top 5 at the Arnold Classic in my opinion is very realistic. And he is a breakthrough star of 2023, but his 5 moments of fame were quickly shadowed by another guy, another guy who also had a pro debut one week later at Prague Pro and that was Rubiel Mosquera and Exila, who probably is more popular now than Horse MD. We never saw these two guys together on a stage, we're gonna see at uh, the Arnold Classic who's gonna beat who. I mean, Marcelo has really beautiful shape, small waist, really nice proportions and Rubiel is a, <laughs> a mass monster. Now, we got an interesting comment, very, very interesting comment from Crisio, who also used to compete against Rubiel back in the IFBB Elite Pro days. 
and now they are both in the IBB Pro League and they were battling against each other. Back in the IBB Elite Pro days, these guys weren't really close. Krizia was dominating goal shows, he was winning everything, and Rubil was like top 5, top 6. Now Rubil made a lot of progress, and he came really close to Krizia, really close. If that show wasn't EVLS show, if EVLS wasn't sponsoring Mikhail Krizia, I don't know if the result would be the same. A lot of people actually had Rubiel in second. At the Prague Pro in the backstage, Krizia actually made a little comment about Rubiel. He said that back when they were competing together in Elite Pro, Rubiel really wasn't that good, he wasn't very good. And after Krizia saw Rubiel's photos from the Pro Qualifier, he said that he improved a lot. And I don't think he was expecting uh, Rubiel to push him as much as he did. So now, it's been a couple of months, now Krizio made a statement about Rubiel, and it is very interesting what he had to say, so let me show you. What is the Nexilu, I think that the total hype is not even a big fan. It's a big fan, it's not something else, because no one looks like that. Ale kulturistika by mala byť o niečo inom, o tej estetickosti. No lenže to je taký veľký boom, no je to proste veľké. Hrubo krky, hrubo nohy. Neviem, no ale ako kulturista mne on vôbec nebo nie. Alright, you heard it. Shots fired. So what Krizio is saying basically is that yeah, Rubiel is massive. He has really big neck and really big legs. But that's about it. What he's saying is that Rubiel is just a mass monster. He's really big, but he doesn't have the flow, he doesn't have the aesthetics, the symmetry, the balance, and bodybuilding is about more than just freakiness, than just size. At least that's the way Krizio sees it, and he says that uh, Rubiel is just hype, and that's it. He's not that good, and he's not gonna do that well in the future. That's what Krizio is saying here. Is he right? Well, I love Krizio, I love his personality, I'm a big fan, if you guys watch this video, it's really hard not to like this guy, he's honest, you know, he says what he thinks, he doesn't care, he's not taking himself too seriously, you know, he's, he doesn't have much of an ego, you can't see really a lot of ego, so he believes what he says here, and I respect that, do I agree, however, I gotta say I don't. Yes, Nexilla has a humongous neck, and his legs are definitely out of proportions, and his physique is not the most symmetrical, the most aesthetic one, his conditioning could be a little bit better, not just as far as uh, body fat percent, but like separation could be deeper, there are things that make him imperfect, I'm not saying he's perfect, but he has so much freak factor that it's pretty much impossible for a guy who looks like this to also look aesthetic at the same time. And in bodybuilding, in my opinion, in my eyes, having a standout body part is only gonna help you. Maybe that's not the case in classic physique, but in bodybuilding, I think it's definitely a good thing. And it's not like Rubiel doesn't have anything else and he only has quads and neck. No, he has mass everywhere. I mean, his back is pretty massive, his chest is massive, his arms are big, especially in the side poses, his stomach is in a really good control, the midsection looks really good, his calves are also massive and they are saying they are much bigger in person because they are getting dwarfed by his enormous quads. So, yeah, once again, not the most balanced physique, but it's not like he only has two body parts, he has a lot of muscle everywhere and those two things are standing out. I think he would do better if his neck was smaller, but as far as the legs, I like them the way they are. I don't think they need to be any smaller. Yeah, they stand out, yeah, they hurt his symmetry, but I still like it. It's still super impressive, super crazy, super freaky, and in my opinion, open bodybuilding should be about freakiness, at least partly. Of course, symmetry and balance should be considered, but not to that extent that you want to punish somebody for having a standout body part. I don't think so. I don't agree with that. And I didn't see that in the judging. I think we all can see that the freaks are getting rewarded. So I think there is a bright future ahead of Nexilla. I don't know if Krizio is a little bit jealous because they're both from IFBB Elite Pro and uh, Rubiel is pushing him now and there are people saying that he didn't deserve this second spot here. Some other people are also saying that Krizio was pushing Samson for the first 
but there are people saying like Kevin Leroni for example that Rubiel was supposed to be second so you know maybe maybe Cruz is a little bit angry a little bit mad at Rubiel because of that I don't know but again in my opinion Rubiel is not all hype and I think he's gonna prove that at the Arnold Classic uh, in a couple of months in 10 weeks and we also got a post-show physique update of the youngest IVB pro of all time, Anton Ratushny. Currently the youngest active uh, classic physique IVB pro. And uh, this guy looks crazy once again. We all saw him on stage, but now, after the show... After he filled out his physique a little bit more, he actually had some food, he's not maintaining the dryness anymore for the stage. I mean, he looks better right here, he wouldn't look this good, he wouldn't look better on the stage, you know, on stage you need to be drier, but I think he, he carved up a little bit here, so he looks nice and full and round. And he has something that I wanted to point out, he has that maturity, even though he's only 19 years old, he already has that kind of grainy look. He has the fullness, the hardness, and guys, once again, 19, not 25, not 22, 23, not even 20, 19, he's a teenager. So looking like this at 19, yeah, this guy has a bright future ahead of him. There are people talking about, is he gonna have the personality of, for example, Chris Bumstead? Can he replace him in that sense? Uh, I mean, if he had a personality, he would probably know about it already. He would probably be out there speaking, making videos. So I doubt that, but maybe. Maybe he's just shy. Maybe he just still didn't try. But maybe once he starts speaking, doing interviews, maybe we realize that he has an awesome personality, that he can speak English well. So far, I haven't really heard anything from this guy. I'm curious what kind of personality he has, because as far as the physique... He has the tools, man, to be one of the top guys and potentially if he continues uh, progressing at this rate, maybe he can be the next classic Mr. Olympia. And there are a lot of comments in every post he makes, in every video that people make about him. Uh, you can see it even right here, the, 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 the comment with the most likes, a lay off the juice. So a lot of people are criticizing him for you know, being on gear at such a young age, but... You know, he achieved a lot of success, so I guess it's worth it. You guys tell me in the comment section down below what do you think about this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.